Greetings, I'm Pastor Phil, and we are here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ in Wausau, Wisconsin, and this is Pastor's Pondering. Pastor's Pondering really is a time for me to reflect on things that have been happening, sometimes in our community, perhaps on the news, perhaps in your life during the last week or so since we've visited last. There's no doubt when you turn on the news these days that there's a lot of anger. Anger at politics, anger at individuals, anger at, well, I'm not even sure what people are really angry about. And I've been really kind of addressing this the last couple of weeks because it seems to me that life is not all that terrible, terribly difficult. I mean, you make it so, and it seems though that everybody's angry about something. And I don't understand it. But I do think I know kind of the solution. And so I'm going to take us to Mark today, and it's Mark 1. And I'm going to start out with verse 14. After John had been put into prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news about God. The right time had come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe in the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of the Lake of Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. And Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch men. At once they left their nets, and they went with him. But then he went a little farther on, and he saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in a boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went to be with Jesus. Interesting text, I do believe. I don't know if any of you read the comic strips or paying attention to Snoopy, but in one of the peanut comic strips, Snoopy, the dog, is typing out what he hopes will be a great literary piece of work, a book. And he wraps up the story like this. And so, our hero's life ended as it began, a disaster. He never got any breaks. He always complained. He wanted to be rich, but he died poor. He wanted friends, but he died friendless. He wanted to be loved, but he died unloved. He wanted laughter, but he found only tears. He wanted answers, but he found only questions. At this point, with an exasperated look on his face, Snoopy says, hmm, I'm having a hard time finding the end of this story. Like many of us, Snoopy dug a hole so deep that he couldn't possibly get out. There are people all over the planet who were dissatisfied with their lives. Some of them live in your community. Some of them go to your church. Some of them sit around your dinner table. And some of them are you. There are people who are unhappy with the situations no matter how good they may be having. And maybe you are one of those people, but I need to tell you, if you are, you are not alone. In 1957, so I'm talking, what, 60, 65 years ago now, the term affluent society was coined. Our per person income annually at that point in time was less than $10,000. I know some of you make that much and more in a month these days. But today, we are even more doubly affluent of a society than we were then. Compared to 1957, we have more than two times the number of cars per person as they had back then. Most of you have smart TVs. You all have computers of some sort. Cell phones, which I thought were a silly thing at one point in time, and now I really can't live without it. And do you know that in the year 2021, just this last year, 
let me ask you this. Uh, what are they going this way? How many dollars do you think that we Americans spent on athletic shoes in the year 2020? Take a guess. I'm going to tell you it was $13.6 billion spent on tennis shoes alone. So then, let me ask you the question. Are we happier than we were 65 or so years ago? We're not. In 1957, 35% of Americans told the National Opinion Research Center that they were happy. Today, with all of our modern conveniences, that number has dropped down to 14%, and that trend continues to drop. Judged by the soaring rates of depression, the quadrupling rates of violent crimes, the doubling of the divorce rate, the decline of marital happiness among the happily so-called marital survivors, and the tripling of teen suicide, we are richer, but we are much more unhappy than we have ever been before. Many people today are so dissatisfied with their lives. Now, this by no means means that they're bad people because a lot of them are good people, very good people. They just don't have what we sometimes call a fulfilling life. They have all the material possessions necessary. They have a respectable job. They have people who love them, but they are still finding something missing in their life. Many of us look at other people who live more glamorous lives than we do and think, well, they're happy, they have it all. But we have discovered that that is not at all the truth. As a matter of fact, the more you have, it appears that the less happy you may be. I think maybe those first disciples of Jesus were also dissatisfied with their lives. So think about this story for just a moment that I just read. Jesus goes to Galilee. He's proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. And as Jesus is walking along the Sea of Galilee, he sees Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea because, of course, they're fishermen. Come, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And at once, this is important, at once, says the Gospel of Mark, they left their nets and they followed him. Now, doesn't that seem a little bit abrupt to you? They're working at their nets, and a stranger comes by, they don't know this Jesus, who says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they drop what they're doing and immediately follow. And then Jesus goes a little bit farther down and he sees James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John and their boat and they're preparing their nets. And without any delay, he calls out to them too and says, leave your father and come and follow me. What? There's no discussion. There's no, let me think about this for a moment. There's no hesitation, not even I'll call you back in the morning. This is a major decision. I'm beginning to understand that this is the universal human condition. I'm going to coin it permanent restlessness. We're always seeking, always wanting, always looking for more. The trouble is, we're not 100% sure what we're looking for until we find our peace, our rest, and our home with God. Let's face it, you think life 1957 was stressful, and I couldn't really contest to that because I was just barely born, but 
life is really stressful today. There are so many demands on every single one of us, every single moment. Those disciples, it appears, were dissatisfied with their lives. So when Christ shows up and offers them something better, when he offered to give them a, a new dynamic purpose in their life, they did not hesitate. They did drop what they were doing and they did follow him. So, let me ask you, given the opportunity, would you too? Let's face it. Most of us would like to get something more out of life than we do. We want the abundant life that Jesus promised. But we've come to discover that a fluent life, an abundant life, isn't the same thing. We thought it was, but it's not. What Jesus calls these first disciples to be, fishers of men and women. Please don't let the language confuse you. If they'd been carpenters, he might have said, I will make you builders of men and women. If they were educators, he might have said, I will make you teachers of men and women. The point is that you will find your greatest fulfillment when you take the love that you receive from Jesus and pass that on to someone else. We do live in a very angry society and a society that needs to have love, contentment, and peace in our homes, in our communities, at the church, in our lives, and only you can do that by finding the peace and the love of Jesus Christ. So what are you missing in your life? I'm just wondering. Be with me for a moment of prayer, wondrous God. We thank you for your call to follow. May we open our eyes, our ears, and be open to the possibilities that you lay before us. Opportunities that we've never even imagined or dreamt of yet. But opportunities to be whole people sharing your love. Amen. Well, I don't know. That's what the news took me to this week. Thanks for sharing with me. God bless, take care, and see you later.